All right, I have a seven o'clock board members. I'll call the meeting to order. Let's uh, rise and say the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is the December regular meeting of the Oaks Public School Board, uh, Tuesday, December 8th, 2020, 7 a.m. here in the Oaks Public Schools Conference Room and also via Zoom. So we have April and Larry as our co-hosts on Zoom. We have with us Amy Clark, Brandon Hack, Corey Shaw, Kylie Murphy, Mrs. Roberts, and Vicki Kelly joining us by Zoom. Here in the boardroom, we have all board members, Superintendent Steinhoff, Mrs. Self, April Herring, and Mr. Beta. With that, uh, board members, the agenda was in your packet. Uh, a motion to approve or any additions or corrections to the agenda. Nagel moves to approve the agenda as presented. Is there a second? Thorpe seconds. Any discussion? Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. Motion carries. I've already taken care of the recognition of visitors. Uh, public communications, there were a few uh, thank you cards in your packet, including one from me. So I thank all of you for your uh, individual and uh, on behalf of the district recognition uh, in the event of my dad's passing. Um, actually not up there yet. The others were uh, the Dobitz family for uh, recognition of their birth of their child and uh, Lindsay Courtney, uh, death of a grandparent. So uh, with that, we'll move on to the action items. Um, First action item is related to the teacher grievance that we've had before us. And for this, uh, we'd like to move into executive session. Um, so we'll need a motion uh, that is printed in your agenda. So if one of you could do so, we can move into executive session to consult with our attorney. Make motion to move to executive session. Okay, hey, Schmitz moves to um, enter into executive session, and I believe what he said was for an attorney, for attorney consultation and discussion regarding issues related to Catherine Heimler's grievance teacher contract. Yes, pursuant to North Dakota Century Code 44 014921 and 9. Is there a second? I know, I'm just that way. Is there a second? Nagel seconds. Uh, is uh, there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion carries. Are you prepared to report? Um, so, yeah, and then we'll be moving all the participants to a waiting room until we're done. Okay, and it will be recorded on Zoom or if you nope, can... we pause the recording. Okay, there you go. Yeah, good. And I would assume that we're going to have the same people that were in executive session the first time uh, yes. in this executive session. Uh, <clears throat> Would it be appropriate to close the door? It would be, yes. Maybe you can handle that, though, you think? Uh, no. Mr. Beta? No, oh, yeah, Mr. Beta wasn't in, wasn't in here. I was in the first one, so. Um, I guess. <laughs> what, what, what are the wishes of the board? Uh, we'll ask Mr. Beta. He might learn something. That might, yeah, that's. <laughs> <yes. laughs> Aren't we all? Learning? The recording, all right. the recording will be in though. All right, all right. We're uh, again. We're this is the Oaks Public School. This is the Oaks Public School Board. We are in executive session, and with us we have all board members: Superintendent Steinhoff, uh, Mrs. Sell, April Herring, Mr. Beta, and our attorney Amy Clark is with us. All others have been removed. Uh, moved into a waiting room. So, uh, uh, ending our executive session at 7.29 a.m. And that reminds me that I failed to say what time we started it, so I apologize for that. Um, we are, uh, this is the um, Oaks Public Support 
regular meeting Tuesday, December 8th. We started at 7 a.m. We entered into executive session um, for attorney consultation and we are returning to open session. So um, one by one, our guests are rejoining us. And I will wait until all are here. Uh, we will be then taking up um, the first reading of the 21-22 calendar. Do we think everyone's back in April? Yeah. Okay. All right, we are back in open session after having uh, an executive session for the purpose of attorney consultation. The next item on the agenda is the first reading of the 2021-22 school calendar, which was in your packet. Any comments with regard to this? The uh, one comment I have is that uh, this can't, this calendar uh, emulates this the same relation our calendar had this year with the Southeast Region Career Technology Center. So. We are very close um, to their calendar, just as we are this year. And I recommend that we stay close to them because every time that we're off, it means that our kids are missing uh, last time at the Southeast Region Career Tech Center, seven through 12. All right, um, is there a motion to approve the first reading of, oh, oh that must be the one that I had in my I have the last year's one, sorry. Is there a motion to approve the first reading of the 21-22 calendar? I'll make a motion. Rosendahl moves to approve. Uh, is there a second? Second. Schmidt seconds. Is there any discussion? Are there questions or discussion? Clarifications on the calendar that was presented? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the first reading of the 21-22 calendar, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say no, the motion carries. Restart plan review. Um, who would like to lead this? Sure. Dr. Steinhoff, would you do that for us? Please? I don't foresee, with the restart plan that we have, I don't foresee many changes in there. The one big issue that's changing is because of the governor's executive order on activities and then his rollback and now North Dakota High School Activities Association meeting and making changes. There's new guidelines for activities uh, and specifically for activities in terms of attendance for fans. And so that's the the probably the component that you're going to be addressing. April, there's nothing else you can think of in there in the entirety of the restart plan. I need that adaptation at this time. It was just those two things, the removal of the 14 day quarantine. Yeah, quarantine. Day. Oh. And quarantine. then the mask requirement for the orange days. Okay. Is the, is the quarantine thing though, is, is that specifically listed in there or is it? Is there's a, there's a an link? amendment on page, there's a proposed change on page. Uh, okay, so we need to adapt that yep, to, yep. To, to the new uh, quarantine. So from what I see there is on page three of the restart plan that was in your packet, um, there's a there's a some mark uh, some struck out language and a replacement of 14 with 10. And those I think would that be the only places to comply with the, the changes to to the um, quarantine requirements? Yep, everything else is linked to the health department website, so it's just the DC county. <laughs> and then the next one would be um, because we had the, the state mask mandate, um, we had to change the indoor activities to um, requirements instead of encouraged for more. So those are the only two actual changes to the restart plan that we need to yeah. that we need to approve today to follow the state guidelines. Yep. Yeah. I, my question is, we already have a mass mandate. Why do we need to do anything else? Because in the orange column, our current plan says masking is encouraged. But we already have, when you come in the building, you have to put a mask on. So. But in activities, it's not. It's separate. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's just to eliminate the confusion between what the 
what the health department and the governor's office is putting out as opposed to what we're putting out. Okay, any other questions? And 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 the this conversation regarding our proposed these proposed changes to our restart plan, I are, are, are these how how would activities attendance fit into this? Is that a a, a, a separate discussion? No, I think activities attendance can fit directly into this. I think we could have a discussion on what region one has agreed to, uh, what uh, our region and our district, you know, has agreed to. And then if there's you as the board want to make changes about how we handle the 50 spectators, I would want you to guide us on what that should be, how we would do it. You know, Brenda and I talked about this at length yesterday and, uh, you know, agree that if you change it, we'll, we will abide by it in terms of how we handle the spectators. Uh, although region one is doing everything the same, which means 50 fans and they're only home fans. So there's no away fans or activities. Uh, and district five agreed to the same protocol. Um, so- but, but this plan, I mean, we have, we have, this already says we're gonna have a maximum of 50 spectators but this plan I think we, we can go ahead and act on this and have a separate discussion about how we would like to see tickets allocated in our at our home activities and and then about whether we want to or can uh, have any influence on how that um, how other districts are are allocating those 50 tickets. Um, because the maximum the maximum allowable spectators while in orange is 50 and that's not something we can control it's but we can the governors but, but we can control who gets the 50 tickets at our activities okay so i think what's before us here then are the two changes proposed to our restart plan which are found on page three related to the quarantine requirements and on page 10, uh, simply um, changing encouraged uh, to required um, masking, which which really is, as Robert pointed out, is already in effect, but our, 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 our plan doesn't say that. So those are the only two changes that have been made to the plan. Yes. All right. All right. Any? Any motions or um, or to approve or amend? I'll make a motion to adjust the restart plan. Okay, make a move to um, approve the proposed changes to the restart plan, page three and page ten, as we've discussed. Is there a second? There a second. Well, for lack of a second, is there another motion? Or is there a second? We already said as a school, we're making our kids wear masks in orange. We said just orange. This goes back to yellow, it's back to option. What are we hearing from the state? At, at the end of this week, next Monday, something's gonna change or Sunday. Are we gonna go back to some county control? Or are they gonna keep top down? Can you hear you hearing anything, Greg? Uh, I'm asking some of those questions and I'm not hearing anything. Uh, so my but, question but, about activities, which is really irritating to me, is if masks, if everyone's wearing masks, what difference to make is 50 or 75? Okay, we require a mask in orange. You want to go to Allen and watch a damn cowbell game? Go. 50. The mask, this virus doesn't know if you have 50 or 75. If you're wearing a mask and that's going to help alleviate this, then I'd say, yeah, mask. But then we're not going to limit it to 50. I'm not, Which hearing, is it? Yeah, I'm not hearing anything in terms of a change that would be coming. There's another uh, meeting today, uh, town hall meeting, that maybe I'll learn new, new information on. Uh, but 
I'm not hearing of any any changes I know of that are coming. I, I would just argue the fact that as our district and our games say it's 50, but there's 50 from Ellendale and 50 from Oaks, but you have to wear a mask. I would say that at that point, hey, we're going to buck this system. They're telling us masks are going to help us alleviate and also space. There's enough room in these gyms. I'm not saying pack it up to 250. Let's have a hard time saying, oh, we're going to level this and this and this. These kids, I've talked to them. Playing the cowboy game is going to suck when it's just one team that has fans there. I, I I understand the gravity of the situation, but there's also a point of which is it? They want to lock you down and put a mask on you. But what are the repercussions if we don't follow these changes to the high school association? I, I had Brennan reach out to North Dakota High School Activity Association yesterday and ask that question about what happens, and they submitted. They, they talked to him about it uh, and then also submitted to him what would happen. Brennan, do you want to do you want to just recap your conversation with uh, uh, Brian Bubach? Yep, yep. So I talked to Brian yesterday on the phone um, and essentially asked him that that question. Um, and I guess long, you know, kind of encapsulating what he said is that um, due to the amount of work and you know the situation and things that they've had with the governor's office that if we if we choose not to abide by the guidelines that they set forth um, they would go into essentially an executive session with their um, I'm not sure what you would want to call them it, I guess probably executives of the activities association to determine um, kind of the outcome of that uh, and his his comment was just based on the amount of work that's happened between them and the governor's office that he would expect the the consequences to be quite severe um, for any teams that chose to do that. Um, he talked about different things like postseason bans, um, pretty hefty fines, um, all the way up to possibly suspension of whatever program was in violation of it for um, potentially a multi year type situation. This is our worst case scenario. Let's go back to August when he said we're going to give school board some, some discretion here and the county some discretion. Now this thing's having and our numbers are, I'm not saying they're better. But why are we having a meeting? What this market price? I understand our orange, but when is this going to end? I mean, there's got to be some kind of, we have no, we have no say. Of course we're going to say yes. If you don't, they're going to throw you out. Board members, let me suggest that I I think that the approval of the amend the proposed amendments to the to the restart plan are separate from our discussion of how. I mean, it. I don't think we're going to change the 50 fan limit, and I think that the the conversation about approving these proposed changes is separate from how those 50 tickets should be or could be allocated. Uh, I'd like to have a separate discussion on that. Um, in my view, and I don't know any more than anybody else, but I can't possibly see the governor changing any county from orange before Christmas. I don't think he's going And or or anything in any any or the state changing from orange before Christmas. And that means that between now and and I would say. New Year's as well. So for the rest of this month, I think we're we're in orange and we have a 50 to 50 person limit at any activities. Um, the question is how do we and how do other districts allocate those 50 tickets? And I have some ideas about that, but I think that's separate from this discussion. The only things we're changing is the number of days in quarantine and masking. The 50 is already in there. I'm saying why that's not something we're changing. It's already lost, so we're not doing it except affirming what they're telling us to do. Why do we have to change anyways to do it? Well, it's true. Uh, exactly. There has been a school that didn't comply with the state requirements and they were threatened of their funding being confiscated. Okay. I understand that. That's what I know. But again, I'm trying to put a vote uh, the thought about this with the mass. If everyone does wear the proper mass, why 50? Not 100 if you're spaced out in the gym. I, well, I get, I'm going with this. I'm just putting a little discussion here that we're not just cheap here, which we are to a point. We want to do the best for our kids, but this 
really a tough situation. I, I agree. I'm not against Sheila's motion. I'm not. I'm just like, we don't really have a say in it. So what we're affirming here is something we have no control of. You're, you're, you're right. You're affirming something. So what difference does it make whether right? you do or don't? We're never going to have to follow it. Other than we, it's a requirement of us as a school district to have a, a restart plan. That's that's one of our requirements from uh, I was surprised this didn't fall any more into it because we did this a month ago where we did it with the kids. So well, I expected the orange to kind of fall through orange to orange. I didn't expect the activity to be different this week. So, so maybe we need to break this down into two discussions. One is the quarantine change. Um, I don't know. Uh, does does everyone agree that can, can we just go ahead and vote on? Uh, can I have a motion to approve the change on page three with the quarantine, the, the less restrictive quarantine? Okay, Nagel move moves to approve the change on page three related to quarantines. And Thorpe seconded? Did I get seven days? Oh, he, oh, he <laughs> All right, Nagel moves to approve the uh, uh, change in quarantine language on page three. Is there a second? Thorpe will second that. Thank you. Is there any? Further discussion on that change on page three. Re reducing, um, uh, it just says must quarantine and we're in on paragraph four, we're eliminating reference to 14 days. And then in the note below, we're reducing from 14 to 10 in compliance um, with the state guidelines at this time. Okay, is there any further questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion carries. So the only other proposed change to the restart plan is found on page 10. I passed. Um, uh, in the indoor activities, while in orange, um, we already have a maximum capacity of 50. And a ticket system will be issued to each team athlete and a wave team based on a wave team roster size. Will be required to present a school issued ticket to be admitted to the facility. Social distancing is encouraged. The change we're proposing or that's being proposed to us is masking is cross out encouraged. Um, and uh, it would be required for all fans, workers, and officials. And that is right from the North Dakota High School activity. Association guidelines for return to play. Sessions may be available, streaming and other viewing options may be available. This is our, um, this is, we, we already have approved all of this at previous meetings other than the change to require rather than encourage masks. Um, and we're adding fans, workers and officials. We're not, it's not being proposed in this proposal to change cap capacity to 50. As I understand it, if we wanted to say 75 or 100, we'd be in violation and subject to penalties and um, um, I, I will just tell you that I reached out either yesterday or over the weekend. Um, I don't think we have any hope of increasing the number. It's my concern that um, we need to we need to have an influence on how those 50 tickets are allocated. I I propose to Brennan and to Craig and um, I I'm very pleased that Brennan reached out to the other ADs and sought their feedback on this proposal. My proposal is that a JV a JV game is an event and a varsity game is an event. Each of those two events would be allowed 50 spectators. If you have a ticket to the JV game and the JV game is over, you leave. You have a ticket and you have a ticket to the varsity game, you get to come to the varsity game. I think that there are enough, 50 is enough that most participants, most players could have at least one or both parents in attendance. I think that's a very reasonable proposal. And I thank Brennan for reaching out and getting feedback. The feedback he got was negative. And I don't, um, I don't expect that this board has any control over what other school districts do in their district. But I do 
that we as individuals, as parents, maybe as board members and as parents can reach out to other district board members and parents. I can't believe other districts' parents aren't up in arms with their own school. Why would they, why would they want to discourage home, uh, any of visiting fans when their fans are going to be visiting other schools or would like to be visiting other schools? Easier to follow along, I think. It's just easier. That's what they want. That's and, what people want is easy. And Brennan, Brennan, um, in my email, I asked that if you know if there is objection or disagreement with the proposal, and again, I do appreciate you reaching out. What what is what what was what what are the reasons for not for, for not thinking that this is a, a reasonable idea? Um I wish I could give you. Is he frozen? Yeah, frozen. <laughs> oh wait, we can't hear you. Okay, okay, start over. If you were talking, you were you were frozen. Sorry. Um, uh, to be honest with you, I wish I had a good answer for you. I, I'm not sure I really do though. Um, as as you mentioned, a lot of the feedback I received yesterday was negative. Um, probably the overwhelming theme that I heard from the different people. Uh, was that they they have to be responsible to their stakeholders in their communities um, was was probably probably the most common response. Um, you know, outside of that, I, I don't really have a ton of information to really share in in that regard. So, what I I hear you say is that their their administrators want to be accountable to their stakeholders. Do their stakeholders not care if they get to go to away games and watch their kids play? Do their stakeholders not care if their kid gets hurt when they're in Linton um, or Napoleon that, that there's nobody there to take them to, to get emergency care? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and those are concerns that we had we had talked about, you know, in the previous week um, when we met as a as a district AD group. Um, you know, along with the, the double header issues and things that you had also um, brought into question. I, I, I don't have the answers for you, to be completely honest. Um, it wasn't it wasn't a very positive, positive day yesterday. And in regards to that, reaching out to the different schools, trying to to get information out of. It. All right. Well, thank you for doing so. Um, I, I will just say board members, I have no problem with the um, with, with the, this change proposed on page 10. Um, and uh, what I do have a problem with is how are the tickets to be allocated? And we could be really big and nice people and say, and, and I, you know, we could, we could override uh, the decision that all of the ADs agreed to in our district and say, we're not going to do that. We're going to allow visiting fans to, the, you know, like, like I said, maybe two tickets per participant and, and then make them leave when the JV game is over and allow varsity fans in. But, but I mean, the, 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 then there's no negotiation. There's nothing that, there's nothing that says anybody well, else is I'm with you because let's be honest, basketball should be a dozen. I don't know how many he's going to have on first. You know, it might be 14. If you give them, we give our side three tickets, both parents and a kid for crying out loud. Still have 14, 15 tickets left. You give it to the other team, and you bring one parent in. I've heard several people bring up what you already did, which is we've been at games where somebody's broken nose, rolls an ankle, busts a shoulder. You kind of want to be there, and your kid gets hurt. Now you got to say, I'm like, like you said, it's in Linton or somewhere else. It's, it's bad enough. It's in Allendale. It's only 30 miles. So why I would you think we give each of our JV players three tickets, and then that's a great idea. Have them exit. And then you give the same three tickets to the varsity players. You, you we would still have, you know, probably 30 kids. Give 20 to the other team, 15, at least one person. Yeah. Player, at least yeah. one. Yeah. So yeah. there's a parent there. That's a great yeah. idea. Anyway, be leaders about it. Let's do it. I don't think we're gonna. I don't think we're being bad to our stakeholders. Unfortunately, I didn't go to any volleyball games because I knew there was no tickets. I think people realize let the parents go. That's what I did. Make sure the parents get in there. So that's. I don't think being. Reasonably, your stakeholders. I don't think there's many people that don't have kids that realize, oh, I need to go to that game. Football is a little different, but indoor activities, we realize, let the parents go. I, I 
as a parent of a varsity player, I would give up my JV ticket or seat in a heartbeat. So a, so a parent of a JV player from another town could go. I can't believe that the stakeholders of these other districts don't feel the same way. I just I just don't think it's been balanced. Merry yeah, Christmas. Um, and so, I just want to, I think I want the administration, I think you're hearing the board. We have to 50. I mean, we don't have a choice on that. Just, you know, when you're enforcing the 50, yeah, you have to enforce the 50. Yeah. Just hear what. Right. Exactly. Another uh, comment is what, and, and. Craig shared with me that you thought Ellendale uh, early in the discussion before the, the, the no no visiting bans was agreed to. Ellendale had some. Uh, Ellendale tended to be more reasonable or, or less less um, less certain that that was the right thing. So, um, despite that, the High School Activities Association would like um, things to be uniform. What stops us from, say, negotiating with Ellendale for a little bit different? Because that's one of our two first basketball games. Nothing? I, I, I mean, through the Activity Association, the answer no would be nothing. Would. Start over. Okay. Am I back? Can you hear me? Yes, I okay. think so. Okay, I'm in the tool. I'm not Keep sure why talking. I'm stopping so much. Um, no. you're, not, you're on Mars. <laughs> Can you hear me now? <coughs> well, okay. Um, I don't think anything's not right. Yeah. You're getting at. What, what did you say? Said, nothing is stopping. Okay. Having him from right, right. That's what well, there's nothing stopping them. The in the North Dakota High School Activity Association guidelines, you know, it says the 50 you shall fall, and then the next line below it says that we, as the High School Activities Association, encourage regions and districts to have similar protocols. So that would be the one thing that would be discouraging another school to say we're not going to follow suit, but also do it because you, you're now not going to the one you're not you're not agreeing to you know similar protocols within the district. But it doesn't say you require it, it says encourages of that part. So it, uh, let's just, I'd like for clarity here because we obviously, people don't necessarily know when the varsity is going to start, when JV is going to end. They're going to, they're not going to sit in their cars and want to wait. So they're going to be in the building, obviously. If, uh, I'd, like to know, <laughs> I'd like to know your perception as a board if, you know, if we do this, how do we control that in terms of? The varsity fans that would be coming in and then the JV fans would be coming out so that we don't have a hundred co mingled together. Why, are, why aren't people sitting in their cars? Because they're in, if they're coming into the building, I mean, you 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 know, if the JV game starts at yes, it's going to be over by seven around seven. seven. And, yeah. and when you start seeing those JV, you know, the game's over and you come in. I don't think it's that hard. Just make an announcement. I mean, also make an announcement. Everybody oh, exit yeah. promptly. Yeah. You're going to get, you're, the okay. ticket that you're holding is a ticket for the JV game. It'll the JV game color. is over. Thank you for coming. Now exit so the other fans can come in. What if you have the golden ticket and you have a JV and Oh, yeah. yeah. You can auction that one off. Uh, we've spent a lot of time on this. We have significant additional items on our agenda. Um, I'd like to. Um, we do have a motion on the floor with regard to the changes on page 10. Um, and I, I guess I think we've provided input to administration with regard to our thoughts. And I, I personally, as a parent, and to some degree as a board member, I'm, I'm intending to personally reach out to board members and fans that I know in other districts that, to get their input. That, you know, if, if this is the way you feel, then if you're just a, a parent that, and you want to attend your kids out of town games, you're going to have to put some pressure on your your district administrators to, you know, to, to give and take. And I, I'm just I'm just going to do that on my own. But we do have a motion on the board. Um, on, do we? Uh, yes, yes. So didn't we? 
I'm sorry. Split it into two. I thought we got to the second one, didn't we? I'm I sorry. We did. April, I'm help me. You're requiring a mask and orange, which is again, we already have. We already do it. Here. So why is she suggesting that we have plans? Okay. I'll second it. So Sheila, <laughs> Sheila moved. My motion was never about anything you're nope. talking about. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sheila moved to approve the, the amendment on, on page 10 and Rosenthal seconds. Okay. Everybody with me? Thank you for your patience. Is there any further discussion? Just on that motion, though. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. The motion carries. Okay, one comment on the capacity. I don't understand. We're capped at 50 when the restaurants are at 150. That's something I think needs to be taken up. Right. I mean, sense. that makes no sense to me. He bumped. He bumped them up, but left us. So, I mean, that's something that needs to be addressed at the state level. And concessions are discouraged. Right. With the with the number, then, if we do so many for JV and so many for varsity, how many home? How many of the way? How many how many away tickets do you want us to issue to away teams of the fifty for JV and for varsity? I'd like to kind of run by the coaches a little bit. How many players do you have on each team? There's 12 varsity players. I think each kid should get three tickets. That's 36. The only thing I want to be careful about is I noticed that she's changing up roster size. That's what and that's I'd like to know that. So at that point, yeah. roster size is 15, but that doesn't mean that every school has that many players on yeah. their roster exactly. at this time. I mean, I, I think the way it's worked is the girls, you know, you, you don't have the numbers on the roster, but um, a varsity roster might start out at 11 players, and and then other kids are going to earn those last. Four I think we should find that out. I think you know two or three. It's nice to at least have two to have both parents there, but some parents, you know, some families have more than you know the families. Sure. So I think I'd like to see three, but let's see where the numbers are at. And, and at least give 10 tickets to the other side. So they have a parent there. That's because that injury thing is real. We've been through it. We've had to drive our kids to the hospital in the emergency room. That was brought up as a district. Okay, so we can't let anybody in there. And if somebody goes down on the coach's team, you need to have somebody in the vehicle there to get them to the emergency room. You can't take the bus. Do we need to almost have you guys drive a vehicle now? We have vehicles. Yeah, we're going to have to have a chase car. That, we talked about that, that having a, a car follow the bus. You have to. So. Okay, and I don't know that that has to be in a, a motion and an action of the board, but we've given you some ideas and some consensus, I think. Um, so what about when we have a C-Squad game? A C-Squad game is a different game. Okay. You get a C yeah, ticket, you get a B ticket, or you get an A ticket. Okay. And um, some kids are going to play D and B. Some people are going to, some kids are going to play B and A. I mean, you, you go, go through the coaches. Who, who do you, who's going to be on your... Who's going to be on that bench and on the floor in these games? And whatever's left over, it can Smith, the state's not going to be your power. No. You're putting 50 on the website, they're not going to be your first team. And I'd encourage, like, if if you if we have parents that want to step up and serve as ticket takers, great. They're they're a team event person. They're any they're an event personnel standing by there taking tickets. Robert and I could have done. I'm sure you could. I mean, and I'm. And Ryan can be the official. Get your officials in there. Get that resolved. Yep. Yep. Thank you, Sheila. We'll wait for more. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't believe we need a motion. Um, we're we're gonna we we we've, we've given guidance. We need to meet again sometime. We'll walk. All right, let's move on then to a uh, school policy review. Um, of these, let's see, April, oh, I, I think I have to get down. Okay, the first, first group, small letter I, all of these, the school boards are policies which they can.
antiquated word, and I suggested that we use the word recording instead of tape. And said she could incorporate that. So yeah. what I'm going to suggest is that um, portion of AAA, the first one, we could adopt all of these today as a first with simply with being on the license. And with the change I suggested and without the additional welcome language in the last one. Okay. I have a question on BD, BDA, BDBA, let me get it right. Um, you have bracketed words. Do we need to decide if those are going in or not, April? <laughs> <laughs> Officers of the board. I don't see the very first paragraph. And oh, yeah. Oh, there's red brackets. Oh, yeah, yeah. There are. Well, we have a president and a vice president, and so I would suggest that they would approach that it would all. I agree. I just wanted to okay. make sure yep. if we needed to. Is that this one? B B A. B B B A. Next one. That one. Oh. The brackets are red. Oh, yeah. To remove that, I kept that in there. And vice president and vice president. Yeah. So I need to remove the brackets. Okay. Thank you. All right, were there any questions uh, or other comments on any of these policies? If not, um, I would entertain a motion to approve uh, all, with the exception of AAA, and I would, I would entertain a motion to approve all of them as a first reading as they're presented. Um, and BCBA would be without the welcoming language. Uh, Thorpe moves uh, the approval of all of these except AAA uh, as final approval in a first reading. Is there a second? Second. Schmidt seconds. Is there any further discussion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. Motion carries. Um, now let's look at triple A. Uh, I would entertain a motion to adopt that as a first reading to be carried over for a second reading. Is there such a motion? Nagel moves to approve AAA as a first reading. Is there a second? Thorpe seconds. Is there any discussion? I thought there's a lot of stuff in there. And some of it is really good. Um, some of it may be controversial, even if it's good. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Motion carries and the first reading is approved. Next, uh, there are two policies that are no longer needed. That is DGC and GCBC. Are we in there? Oh, I'm sorry. Never mind. Um, okay, so item two, thank you, Sheila. Yes. Item two is then the four policies that School Boards Association recommended for for review, not, not from within our review, but those are their routine monthly updates. Um, AACA is uh, relates to 504 plans. Um, 
the other one that we need to do. Um, BBC, uh, method of billing a board vacancy. GCAA, grade promotion retention acceleration. And GCBA, grading. Uh, what are your thoughts for these? Uh, do we need first and second readings on all of these? I think we probably should since they're just month, they're, they're the routine monthly. Yeah, we definitely do. All right. So let, let's, I'll entertain a motion for approval of a first reading of AACA, BBC, GCAA, and GCBA. I'll make a motion. Rosendell moves. Is there a second? I'll second. Nagel seconds. Were there any questions or discussion on these? Some of them were quite minor language changes. Um, others are fairly significant. Any questions or discussion? We'll be looking at these next month. Any more questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion carries. Now we can rescind. Motion to rescind DGC and GCBC. Were they in our packet? I don't remember. I don't believe they were. Okay, and they are. Staff wellness policies and the curriculum. Okay, here's my focus. Uh, DGC is staff wellness. It's a supplementary policy. It is unnecessary. And recommend the reading. And GCBC is curricular performance and grading. Also supplementary. <coughs> Unnecessary. Um, presumably, it's addressed in other policies. So, I'd entertain a motion to rescind those two policies. And that only is a that's a one motion and done, right? Okay, we rescind; they're gone. Make a motion to rescind those two policies. Nagel moves to rescind those two policies. Is there a second? Schmidt seconds. Any discussion? Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. Motion carries and those policies are rescinded. Moving on then to the second reading of FFE, which is extracurricular participation, which we discussed last month. And there's a nicely cleaned up copy, which I, I was much better able to understand than last month. Is there a motion related to a uh, final approval of second reading of FFE? Thorpe moves. Is there a second? Uh, Rosendahl seconds. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. Motion carries and FFE is approved. There's no, it's no additional existing policy review. So we'll move on to reports. Activities director is first and he is here. Okay, no. okay. Um, yeah, I won't go through and read all of this. I'll have an idea of what's going on. Um, our fall season wrapped up. Um, kind of a note of volleyball. Hansen was named the outstanding senior athlete of the year in Region 3. Um, and then we were also fortunate enough to have back to back uh, senior athletes of the year in the state as well as the principal last year. And it was kind of a, a cool looking back. I, I couldn't actually find a time where a talent had two in a row like that. So uh, I'm not saying it hasn't happened. I just wasn't able to locate when that has. So um, it's kind of a, a good recognition for our kids here in, in Owens and in our school as well. Um, Football, we just put this in here just because there were some questions on it. Um, we were given the option to move to nine man, um, which uh, I did reply yes to the activities association. Um, but due to our playoff performance uh, over the course of the last couple of years, we were not able to opt down to nine man. So we are uh, in 11 man uh, A, or 11 man B, excuse me. But they are redoing the, uh, the, the different divisions function next year. Uh, so it'll be a little bit different. In the last couple of years, but we'll, we'll be in essentially the equivalent division of what we are in. 
I've talked to Scully on this, but I think that's something I like as a school board. I've talked to Coach Dobitz on this. Not that we're going to change anything, but I think I'd like to have a school board get together with Willie on this. Basically, we've done a ton of double A teams. This is the Central Cast, which has double R numbers, Kindred, Hillsboro, these big schools who have done extremely well at double A. In fact, their first game next year is Beulah, who got second, lost by a last second touchdown to Bismarck St. Mary, who beat Kindred in the semifinals in Central Cast. They have numbers. We're going to end up just like Lisbon did about four or five years ago, getting their butts handed to us because we have half the kids and everybody else is in. And then about three or four years ago, say, hey, you want to go to nine men? Yeah, to help rebuild our program, we will. Then we have to find a better way than looking at this every two years. It's not your fault. I'm saying, I think that we need to say, no, we understand you're doing this, but we don't approve. Because it's this yo yo effect of nine men, 11 men. It's pretty fair. Why do Kindred? And Central Cass and Hillsborough, who are going to the wall at that level, want to come down a level, really down. And what I heard was, if you look at the board who made that decision, you'll see that they got what they want. I think we need to look at that and say, we got to find a way to put yo yo in this because it's not good for any district. I didn't agree when Elizabeth was getting beat up three, four years ago by Wapit in Valley City. They came down a level and they've done extremely well. They have good kids. But that's what they're doing. We're bringing down about eight big teams. <laughs> Guess what's going to do? We just drop the level. I don't know if they have to do two nine man sections, whatever it's going to take. It's got to quit doing this to our side school. We're grooming the OU and coach has gone through it. Coach goes. I'd like to see us write a letter saying, disagree with this 100%. This is outside. Yeah, I'm going to say that couple notes of basketball. The first game for the girls is on December 15th, and then the first regular season boys is on the 18th. We did pick up a scrimmage with the four teams that will be in Oaks and Central Cast. Um, but it's not a game, it is a scrimmage, so they're, I mean, they've done that the last couple of years. But, um, those are kicking off to pretty quick. Uh, junior high girls basketball, we, we picked up quite a few. Um, we're going to call them T-Squad games. They'll essentially be junior high games. Some of those, and then just reschedule a couple of another uh, junior high games that we can call. Um, they're, they're only down for one game as of now, just because Fletcher County has uh, decided to end their season early, essentially. So there just wasn't an opportunity to work that out. What happened to the Sergeant <laughs> County Boys basketball game that we have scheduled? We're, we're in the process of trying to get that rescheduled. Um, I'm running into issues that I did with the girls basketball team when we were working back and forth to try to find a date. So we didn't have it because why? Uh, because it was on the 11th was when that was scheduled for. But it's so, a boys game. Correct, but it was before the restart was allowed. So we're not allowed to start. Well, it was before, oh, sure. I was yeah. thinking, well, they had their nine practice. Yeah, okay. yeah. No, they there were, was, they there was, was the yeah. And it explains it. Thank the, you. The days that we're allowed to start. So um, the plan is to reschedule that one. We just haven't been able to find a meaningful day to change it. But, uh, we're in the process of that. Uh, wrestling, there's a couple pretty significant changes to how that's working. Um, so the region is going to host three nights of fall <coughs> this year. Um, so Oaks is hosting the team. Um, the reason for that is when we started looking at the size of the wrestling teams, there was essentially four teams that had four Oscars, and then there's four teams in our region that have anywhere between two and five female Oscar teams. So, um, so what we're going to do is, is basically take two of the bigger squads and then bring in a couple of the smaller squads save everybody travel because it's not worth lengthening the travel to Kindred and, and wrestle two matches and then skip over and everything else at the end of the road. So we're just going to combine those in with the other ones that have full squads of, of wrestling. Um, that's what's happening there. And then we're also hosting the dual tournament this year, which is the third. And that one has been limited to only the top four teams in the region, uh, which once again for our region won't be a, a problem because there, there's four pretty clearly top four We're just going to take the top four, uh, you know, one will go against four, two against three, and then the, the two we're going to start the division championship in terms of that. So um, that's kind of the ones that are getting going. Unfortunately, with the next two, uh, there's been pretty substantial delays to speech. That one has moved all the way to February.
for this start date. Um, the big concern there was <coughs> having spaces to accommodate enough participants in one location because uh, the other concern with speech was it, it's not really able to be recorded. So the concern from a lot of the state level people was that somebody would record their speech and it's supposed to be uh, one opportunity and then you're done type thing. Whereas if there was recordings, there's concerns over multiple people. Yeah, so. Let me just say, I participated as a giant group package uh, student organizations and Darren has participated in remote. Uh, the DCSOs have done a really good job of, of having their events. And I judged in a job interview contest that it was some of the kids were in person and some were remote. And and I we said to the girl who was remote, we said, this is life. We have interviewed people remotely and please don't feel like you're at a disadvantage. So I didn't have the um, and then the other one that's been kind of unfortunately delayed indefinitely is state music. Um, so there, there are big concerns there where the excessive spread via instruments and singing um, people together blah, blah, blah. So um, that was that was the release that they had on that is that it's just delayed indefinitely. There is no current date available to reschedule that, but they are working. That's what's kind of happened in there. Um, the attendance profiles we've already talked about. Um, just links at the bottom. You can click on them. What is expected with regard to parent <clears throat> meetings for our art piece? That's a great question. I didn't think so. Um, I, I thought that typically, I thought every coach always had a, an opening weekly parent meeting. Okay, any other questions? I do want to throw up. We also had another region reporter back on the football stuff for courts. I didn't read that. Here, I mean, he had the heck of a road to hope because there's some really good athletes go against yeah. the state one, and Simon Rumpflock was there. Congratulations to the region football player here, too. When we have numerous uh, region and all state uh, awards, so really good. Okay, anything else for Mr. Hack? If not, Thank you for your efforts. Um, you can't say it's a thankless job, but I just thank you publicly. <laughs> All right, um, moving on then to the principal's reports. Does Mrs. Stell get to go first? Oh, look, it's just a little sticky note. Yeah, it's just that. Um, so I'll go to quickly to this. Uh, our first winter testing for um, uh, uh, STAR is going to be next week. So we'll have a test then, and then we'll have a late winter test. Um, I I'm going to continue to go up just with the kids being here. Uh, obviously, there's not going to be a Christmas concert, but um, this test has um, a plan for it. She's going to do a virtual concert. The kids are doing the Nutcracker Suite. Um, it's a musical, and it should be kind of the same as what we've done before in the past. And so it's a video, each of the grades singing songs, and it's presented in um, a final format, and it'll go out like we did for the Veterans Day program. It did a really good job. Yes. I think that this will be even better because the music is all in there and the parts and it's pretty organized. Uh, and she's just a firecracker. <laughs> I mean, she's got ideas and she's willing to go out there and do that. She's got the knowledge and the technology piece, you know, so she's, she's all excited about it. Uh, uh, oh, we're down to about 15 kids down right now. I just an update on them. Um, she and I are talking about that for our kids that are out for um, COVID. But it should be down even closer to 10. The thing that's causing this night for us is not here at school because since we rearranged our um, lunch and our kids have been wearing masks, I haven't had close contact here at school. Um, but it's at home. Like if they've got itty bitties and the moms and dads have to take care of them and they can't quarantine, I've got about 10 kids that are gone from the beginning of December and they won't be back past of Christmas because they have to do, you know, the family when they get done with their 10 days and then they've got 14 days or whatever it is now or 10, you know, and so then they can't come. So the hard part is I've got this, you know, we do a lot of really fun things at school and they're missing out on that. So it's kind of heartbreaking, but hopefully it'll change. Um, there's no movie this year, obviously. So the teachers are doing classroom activities for Christmas. PTO is bringing in popcorn and hot chocolate. So it kind of makes the last day special for the kids because it's kind of a bomb movie that's been. 
what we've done for how many years, 20 some odd years or probably longer. And we sent out a survey to our parents uh, for parents looking at distance learning for the spring and in the elementary. I don't, I don't think we're gonna have anybody that's gonna be distance learning. They're all gonna be here with us. The ones that were distance learning are coming back. So that's a really good thing. Why? Did they have a bad experience or are they more comfortable with what we're doing? No, I don't think it was a bad experience. I think, you know, um, they just want to be back in school, is what I'm, I'm thinking. And they're seeing that we're able to mitigate some of what, you know, we're not having like these masks kids getting sick at school and like they thought maybe it was going to be. So maybe they feel safe that their kids are going to be, you know, safe from the school. So, any questions? Thank you. Thank you. No questions. Then we'll have Mr. Bay to give your report, and then you'll 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 give us an update on uh, our student achievement. Yep. Yep. So uh, good morning, students of the month for November. We selected Joey Riser and Bill Schaefer for the high school. And we have Ann Mugley and Michael Mulder. Congratulations to those students as well. Um, I'll get into the base key report and then the parent teacher conference or the result at the end. Oh, we do have the ACT test coming up on Saturday, December 12th. We will post that here. Um, Mrs. Brecker is taking care of that and has students sign up to take it out. Our 7th to 12th Christmas concert um, will be Monday, December 14th at 7. Uh, that will be virtual, but Mr. Stanoff, correct me if I'm wrong, but senior parents are going to be in attendance for that. Um, that will be 9th to 12th only with junior high having a virtual recorded concert. That will happen after we get back from Christmas break. So Mr. Lean is working on that. Our finals week will start here on Wednesday, December 16th. And that'll go through Friday the 18th and then conclude on Monday, Tuesday the 21st and 22nd, and then we go for Christmas break. And school resumes on the 4th of January. Um, distance learning survey uh, that Mrs. Sell is talking about right now with the high school. We have just one so far. Um, there's still, I think, almost a week or a five or six days left to complete that service. So I'll be checking on the brain to see where we're at for those goals going further. Right now in the high school, we have three. So there's two that haven't heard back from, I guess, and I'll be reaching out to them after we get that information. Uh, let's see, I think that's really about all I have. Um, high school too, you know, our, our numbers are not only we've got to again with some close contacts that occurred, but we were sitting pretty good where we had only a few kids out for COVID. Were the close contacts from within school or outside of school? Uh, they were in school. Um, they were determined through finance. And as I was talking to a lot of like grandma boards are saying they don't need to wear masks or something like that for not to come out. Um, I will say this and, and I'd have to look deeper, but right now from what I could tell on our sheet out of all the students in the high school that, that we've close contacted that have been school related contacts, we've had one third positive out of all students that have been home. Started, so, just some stats for you on how many kids are sending home. Okay, if I have any questions on that, I'll get to your parent teacher conference. Mm -hmm. Yes, just out of curiosity, how, how can the cost of the attorney contact me by I mean, I'm just curious. So, if you have to ask care that on that yeah. person, um, what I understood was the game they were playing, they weren't masked under the gym, and it was a four square game, so they would have been six feet. They determined for around 15 minutes, and that's what we're sending. I don't think that it's tough, that we don't require them because we don't want them, but I don't, I don't, I don't disagree, but I think that's, I think that's the trade-off that it goes to the state right. and not the state. And I'm willing to take that trade-off. So that's, that's happened. It wasn't from, from class. Uh, we did a virtual parent-teacher conference um, a while back, and instead of getting survey results, you can see those from the staff. You can see that staff were very satisfied and the preference was to maybe look into doing a combination um, of an in-person and virtual option how that would look logistically i guess we don't know until spring and where we are i can't figure out what tomorrow's gonna look like or next week so we're not gonna worry about that until we get there um but the interesting part we had 48 i think that was the full uh, time again parents take that survey and overall you know they were Satisfied or neither satisfied me, so it was a positive experience for those 48. Um, kind of like question number two, right? What preference? And they're like literally split. <laughs> but what that tells me then is any of those options are, are approval. They, they they're okay with it. There wasn't one like, no, we absolutely do not want virtual. So, you know, what I thought was interesting is 16 like face to face, 19 like 
virtual, and then there's only 14, which is lowest, which was the combination of the two. So maybe it wasn't clear what that meant. And what we were looking at for that would have been a designated time where you can come in and meet face to face, and then the other time would be virtual and try to get the best of both worlds. But we'll know more some spring time if that's an option or, or where we're at. Any questions on the survey results from parents or for staff? There are a lot of pauses with the virtual. I, I will say that I agree face to face that you can't beat it, but there's some great things of not having to overhear a conversation. There's privacy there, um, not having to drive back into town. We have a lot of we have a lot of feedback from the teacher saying that both parents and student were present during the meeting and conversation, which is what we want. So there's some really good things. It went a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Great. Okay, then the next, the ACT report for your academic achievement. The one document, the Excel document, you can look at. And that's the, the historic scores, uh, ACT scores from Oaks all the way back to 2009 and 2010. And then that shows our last averages from 2019 and 20. And then what it'll also show you will be the 19, 2019, 2020 North Dakota average, composite, math, English, reading, and science from the state. And the very last column is the overall average. If you add everything up and divide it by the number of years, on average, where Oaks has been. So you can see, according to last year's data, that you know, we outperformed the state average, albeit very, very small in some areas, and some areas a little bit bigger than others. In one area where we underperform slightly with, with an English by two tenths. And then the company document that I gave you, and you can grab some questions, was from the ACT. And what that document shows you is the states that require all students to take the ACT, which you'll see will be the percent of graduates tested. It's at the top of that document I sent you. It starts with Alabama and we'll go down to you know, North Dakota and Minnesota, the ones that really require all. And then you can look at that next column to see what the average ACT score is for those states that require all juniors to ascend. So if you look at that average score, and our average score last group is 20.1, 20.14, you can see how we're performing in relation to those other states that require all juniors to test. And I'm not seeing on here the the states, you know, so starting with Alabama, the ones that require uh -huh. what did did you do a tally of what the average was for those states that were 100 percent? It's right there. Where your average composite score is what the score is. But they, there's not an overall average of all, all, all those. An average of the averages. Just the hundred. No, I mean if I average all those averages, yeah. like, I didn't do that. No. But there's not just on this sheet. There's I'll not a do statistical analysis. Again. There's not a sheet down there, but if you go to the next one down, then it then it does. It shows the overall average. But I think that's I think that's important to note that you know our kids are performing, you know, even our, our number is even higher than the national average, and that's including states that don't require every kid to take the test, the only ones that want to take it or need to take it, and then we're substantially higher compared to states that require all kids to take the test. Why is North Dakota say only 94 estimated percent of graduates tested? Because I thought all, all are tested. Yeah, testing. you might you might ran the issues last spring, wow. but when they were testing and the shutdown that they maybe didn't squeeze it in, okay. or kids were gone, and they didn't get a chance to take it. That'd be my guess on why it was. This, is, this was the average, the graduating class of 2020, which would have all, every all of them should have taken it as so, juniors. Great. Yeah, but IEP should be factored in if they do get the score right. And I don't know what our IEP population is across the state. This is the class of 2020. This isn't the 2000. This wasn't last spring. This is graduating class, not the date of graduation. So you're deficient. Same with Minnesota, where you're, you've got an 8% gap there. I'm not sure. It's all kinds of things there. Because some kids take it once, some take it twice, some take it three times. So, I mean, all that comes to play too. Yeah, and I don't know how you'd get to 100. My mind started to go to like homeschool or stuff like that that might be included, but that's still a test. I'm not sure why there's a gap. That's a great question. Any 
Any other questions on ACT? I have a, a related question. Um, work keys. Is work keys an option instead of ACT? Is it in addition to? It's an, do we have kids that take that? And how do you feel about the TCAP? Well, I don't administer work keys. Uh, Mrs. Brecker does. She was the visitor at the Career Tech Center. The work keys is another is another test you can take to reach a benchmark to qualify for maybe college English, a college algebra, even scholarship. You can take that in addition to. So all students have to take that ACT. The work keys would be in addition to. Um, you can take certain parts of it, just like math, reading, and so. Um, I can't access the report that Joey has, and it's really not as nice and nice as the ACT because not all students take it. So on the data, so it's kind of funding and gathering to find bits and pieces, but I couldn't find an aggregate report that had all of our results. I was looking for a site that had. It also should be noted that we've spent the last time of years, Mrs. L trying to get Mrs. Brecker on as the ACT coordinator, where we've had Kelsey Beckstrom and Janelle um, Whipstead. And it's, to say the least, it's like breaking has to change and administrator for the ACT. Yeah. High level security grade, high scan, blood test. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so we're trying to get everything together. And I think we have now we've gotten some roles reassigned and duties and stars reassigned. So yeah, it should be coming on our team. So I think that a lot of people think that high, you know, that ACT scores are really, really, really important. And they are. Uh, for one thing, they uh, they help our students apply, uh, qualify for the state scholarship. You have to be in a certain level to get it. What do you, do you, how do you view an ACT test? Uh, other than the importance for the earning scholarships, is it a predictor of success in college? Is it, a, it, or is it an indicator that a student is a really good test taker? Does it reflect uh, that they really know the subject? Or like I said, they're a good test taker. I think there's a lot of ways to look at the ACT. Um, I would say that I have, have not found any data that says a high ACT score directly correlates to success after high school. It may get you into a college, it may get you scholarship dollars. <coughs> there's also the narrative that we recommend that all kids don't have to go to college or university or have college already paid for it so they're not interested in scholarships. So there's all those discussions go with it. As a math brain, I love having data that I can measure and say, here's where we are. Um, but then we also try to put everybody in that same pot to measure it. And that's what we've done all the years that I've been in school. And so to say that there's something that says, if you get a high T score, you're going to be successful. I've not come across that. Maybe Mrs. Sella does, or Mr. Steinoff has, and Dr. Steinoff has in there, and they work with their doctor's degree, but I haven't found that. So you're a math brain. So I one know. thing that's always kind of been interesting to me is I, not bugged me, but that I've always considered is, you know, some of these classes I look back and I know there were three really high flyers in the class of whatever. And when you have a small set of data of, you know, 25 to 35 kids and you got three that you know got in the, you know, 32 or higher, your average is going to come up. But I, I don't think that tells you a lot about the rest of the kids. So how can we use the data to show um, that, you know, how we're doing for our kids or how our kids are doing? I guess you'd have to ask the question, how are you determine what, how they're doing? Is that off the number on there? Is that the benchmark score? You know, you're right on the average. You know, if you did a meeting, you crossed up your highs and your lows, you know, you get a probably better accurate reflection on a small piece of data to see where we are in the middle. Um, because you're going to have everything from 34s to 14s. Or its test scores, and that's been the case all throughout school. Um, I think the main difference now is you're mandating all students take it. So when you're selling something people don't want to buy, you're going to have some people that don't really see the point in taking it. So that brings your average down. Um, but as far as the kids that are looking at a four-year four-year university that are looking for the state scholarship or other scholarships and want to get in, I mean, especially if they're local in North Dakota. The ACT, and you've seen last year, like schools are saying, we don't even need your ACT scores. Mm -hmm. That's becoming kind of push. I don't know if I agree or disagree with that, but it's not as important, I think, as it once was. And 
if that makes sense, and what is being applicable now specifically with the COVID restrictions and stuff. Well, I just think we need to, if we're going to use ACT as part of our student achievement dashboard or whatever, um, you know, we need to understand, you know, okay, well, you, you got three really sharp kids in this class, and if, if all we're going to do is average it out, that doesn't tell us anything about the the ones that are at the bottom and that the scoring. And, and you, you know, we want, it, it is really important. You said some, some uh, you're trying to sell something not everybody wants to buy. Likewise, there are people, students and families that really do buy in and they yeah. take it over and over and over. And that may not really be a reflection of, you know, it might be a reflection of that. They're, they're real, they've gotten to be a really good test taker and, and it, but that doesn't mean but, oh, public well, school did a better job. No, but I mean, it, it, you know, we have individual students that have done fantastic here. I mean, you can look at the plaque that we'll have in the lobby of students who scored over 30, which is, you know, we have more to add in the last couple of years here to have to put up. You know, if it's important that one kid has started scoring do well, we have kids that are doing that. You know, and we have kids that are taking a lesson and they're fine with it. You know, so I, I guess when you look at data as a whole in a class, you, try, you can make data do whatever you want with it. You can shine whatever light you want. We've seen that now with COVID and everything else. You can do whatever you want with data. The real question is if that's going to be a measuring stick that we're going to use. And if it is, great. We can put a lot of resources and time into that ASP, but it's still comes down to kids that want to take that test or not. No matter how you cut it, no matter what strategy you do. And it used to be, you know, when I was still in school, where everybody goes to college, and everybody has to do the high ASP school. And that narrative has kind of changed, especially with third grade. They realize that we can't push everybody to college. But there's other avenues where kids can be successful in jobs that are available now to pay very well. We don't require you to call your party. I think we need to entertain that for our kids and not push them on this one guy. Okay, Bill, you I just want to say I want our kids to be encouraged to take that test. That's one thing I'll put that helped my kids. They took a separate class, like they learned more about how to learn. And that's the part that concerns me is our teachers really need to teach these kids to be prepared to take that test if they want to or not. So when they do take it, they'll be successful. And I said, obviously, we were watching trends and they go up and down. But I said, English scares me because we were in the 20s and now we're back to 18. Something needs to be addressed there. And I, you will. But that's the whole thing is teachers' job is to prepare the student if they want to go that way or that way. And that's kind of the flex. Okay, the toy is ready. Here's how we get ready for this test. And I think that is a big thing because it is great to if you get a 27 or a 30 on your AC, it's going to change your options for college. We need to for that. How do we do it? With our teachers. We can't do it. We ask our teachers to prepare our students for it. But I said it's that choice ready is awful. These people, you know where these kids are going. They're going to uh, four years because they want to go into a medical field. We need to really help them do a lot of the ACT, not just hope they do. Okay, any other questions or comments? Well, I just say we always look at the average and I mean as we were on the board in the school, we try to do everything above the average. They definitely can't be satisfied just to beat the average or something. Is that all? I want to beat Minnesota. Your head is two points and everything. I don't like losing Minnesota. All right. Anything else? We're ticking away here, guys. We're going to have a two hour meeting. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Mr. Beta. All right. Let's move on to the superintendent's report. First item 212 shout outs, I have none, unfortunately. So, moving on to uh, mental health task force, the mental health task force met, and uh, we scheduled our next meeting for June, June excuse me, January 13th. And in, the meantime, yeah, and in the meantime, we are securing quotes um, from medical places to provide basically like a contract for services so that we would have mental health services for our students and staff. And I anticipate that a lot of folks will be able to make a decision. Uh, I believe that it'll probably be a service that will happen off campus, even though the survey results from the students and staff were that they would prefer it to be on campus. It's just difficult to be able to get someone here. And then if we did telemed, telemed often is even louder than you know in a regular office. And so it's hard for um, privacy issues. Uh, but I'm hopeful that we'll be able to. The location here in town, probably tell them that it'll be either at CHI or Sanford and have kids and staff to go out there and receive services. And we as a school district will you know, cover the cost of that. 
Is, are there any grants available for cost sharing on that kind of thing? It seems like a couple of years ago there were like through the Berkham Foundation. I'll have to look. Um, so we're, we're, we're making progress on that. That's uh, good. And you, you can see that another thing that the, the uh, mental health task force keep up with was to start promoting uh, discussions about mental health. And you'll see that uh, we started to trickle that out both on our TVs uh, locally and then on social media. Uh, and then the third thing there is the website makeover. We are uh, utilizing um, uh, COVID funding and we are getting a new website. And the new website should go live uh, in January. Uh, Maureen is working on that. We decided to go with Blackboard. You know, AFG had been courting us. I guess that's the right word uh, for quite a while. One of the biggest issues we have with Aptigy is that when we send out mass notifications now, Marine can tell if people actually get them or if it, people don't open them or if the email fails. So we can go back and find the issues if we have wrong addresses in. Aptigy, you send out the mass notification and you have no way of tracking whether they actually get it or not. And that was a big concern to Marine of how do we know if people are getting it? We need to be able to stick with that. And so we uh, went with Blackboard. And so this is uh, uh, in progress. In addition to this, we also um, asked for them to give us a professional or rendering of a new updated logo, you know, our, our twisty logo. So we'll be getting those. And I'm not sure if we're gonna get multiple ones. If we get multiple ones, we'll probably do some sort of a survey to get it, you know, updates from students, staff, community on which one they like. And then I'll be able to bring that data to you as a new, as a school board can ultimately choose up what our our new uh, twisty logo will look like. And then, then we'll have a professional one that's uh, high enough quality that we'll be able to you know, replicate and use. So we have a lot of times when people are asking for our logo or we need it for something, we don't have a version that's even high enough resolution that they can work with. Well, I don't think there's any one unit. There, there's so many of them out there, whether it's on the floor yeah. or it's on X TV, or there, there's so many different tornadoes out there. I, I, this is, something i've been wanting for a long time so. I, we don't anticipate changing the crest you know like the crest that's on the logo that'll stay the same that's on the floor and on the floor we come in but it would be a new a new twist either yeah. um, so does she have any issues with blackboard right now is she having any issues not that i'm aware of i'm pretty sure through your app uh no my name oh and i was going to talk to her yeah about that. ask her about that that we had that issue and it took like <clears throat> so new website coming I, I think we'll probably be rolling out in uh, January and that I believe that we'll still have the same URL yes. you, you, you haven't heard any other you know, nope. like we have to go to like old stock nope it should be it should go over to their thing yeah. okay. Super. so this will this be an additional cost to us or is this it's an additional upfront cost and then you have an annual subscription, but the annual subscription is not going to be much more than what we've been. There's going to be some more, but it's not not like the initial cost to, to jump into it and have that done. It's expensive. But we're, like I said, we're using uh, COVID money. That ends my report. Thank you. Any questions? Committee reports? Anything? We didn't have any committees that met between now and then. I do anticipate that we'll have a committee coming up on the facilities meeting, and then I've got some committees that I need to get rolling on that we've not gotten in ways out and started some discussions frequently. Okay, staffing. Uh, the only thing I would have on staffing is Dave is finally fully staffed custodian wise. So Bobby Canodal started yesterday, and it's fantastic that we have a full custodian staff. So the work and get, get the, the efforts you put in to change in uh, compensation for that position work. So thank you. Uh, bus drivers, um, I think okay. Um, Bobby's still in the process of getting his license. I believe he's going to be driving smaller than two eight bus for now. Um, but we have uh, Mrs. Sell has her endorsement to drive two eight, so she's another <laughs> substitute. And uh, <laughs> Sean has been driving quite a bit too, using the two A. Yeah, he's been driving. Yeah. 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 So that two A. Sager. Sager, yeah, Mr. Sager has been driving 
driving two way. He doesn't have a whole, like he's working on his whole bus license. And I think, well, Jordan Lynch is too. And I think that they'll be uh, doing quite a bit of substitute driving for us. So, except there's still no news on supposed to be here sometime soon. Before Christmas. It's in Bismarck. Oh, it's in Bismarck. Okay, it's, it's cool. in Bismarck, and so they're getting decals and everything on it, but they're short staffed. They're helping to make things happen. Okay. Has the girl passed the bus on? I don't think that's been announced. Oh, assistant girls basketball coach is uh, Nick Freeth, who's hired. And uh, we're still working. We'll make an announcement on social media where it's got a picture of him and, uh, you know, a little description. Um, that's That's on the way. All right. Any questions? If not, we'll move on to the minutes. They were in your pack. Any questions or corrections or additions? If not, is there a motion to approve the minutes? We only had one meeting. No, we had two. I was, but then I found out I was wrong. I had two meetings. Okay, uh, is there a motion to approve the me minutes of the two meetings that we've held in November? Fort moves to approve the minutes. Is there a second? Second. Schmidt seconds. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Any questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion carries. Moving on to the review of financial reports. First, we'll consider reconciliation, balance sheet, and revenue and expense. April, anything to highlight? No, nothing that really stands out. Okay, any questions that anybody noticed? All right, is there a motion to approve the reconciliation, balance sheet, and revenue and expense reports as presented in your packet? Make a motion. Rosendahl moves to approve. Is there a second? I'm sorry. Schnagel seconds. Any discussion? Any further questions or discussion about the financial reports? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion carries. The reports are approved. We have the bills. Which we Attention. I just have two questions. Uh, one, the switches, thirteen thousand. Is that routine or something wrong? Um, for CRM. Yeah. It was through um, E-rate, which is a federal program which they pay for any technology behind the wall. Correct. Right. But it, it's, I would say in general, updates uh, just the format. Okay. 